Welcome back to The Morning Brew with Larry Ahrens and uh, co-host Dan Mayfield who's joined us this week here on the show. This segment is uh, brought to you by our friends at ABQ Free Press. Great arts and entertainment coverage coupled with terrific investigative reporting. That's, uh, that's a winning recipe over at ABQ Free Press. Uh, pick up a copy anywhere around town. It's pretty good stuff. All right, Dan, we've got a real live author sitting yeah, here. Yeah, one of the things that Free Press does is to cover authors, and, they, and Adam is joining us this morning. He's the author of The Vendetta of Felipe Espinosa. Yeah. This is your first novel. It's my very first, first novel. No, but not your first time writing short stories and fiction and that kind of stuff, right? Right. I've written a few articles, a few short stories, but this is the debut novel here. Awesome. Well, congrats. Thank you very much. Who is this guy, Felipe Espinosa? All right, so this book is a historical novel. It is based on a true story. Uh, Felipe Espinosa was a New Mexico outlaw who, in 1863, went on a uh, terrible killing spree. Um, he grew up in El Rito, New Mexico, a little north of Taos. Um, and so at this time, we have the Civil War going on. We have the Great Plains Indian War was an going on. Um, and then this lone outlaw, this gunman, who is stalking the territories on this mission to kill American settlers. And so climbing up the Sangre de Cristo Mountains northward into Colorado, he would ultimately go on to kill an estimated 32 people. And um, not just was kill, he, but... Was he a sniper, an assassin? A, did he have a machete? All like, sorts. Anything you could yes, imagine. Yes, I mean, they, were, they were gruesome deaths. They were, um, in fact, the newspapers at the time, before his identity became known, called him the Axeman of Colorado. Because wow. after he was done shooting a victim, he'd go to work with something a little more blunt. Um, and for the longest time, no one knew who was doing it. Um, paranoia just rippled through the territory. Um, and what, what time frame are we talking about? Like 1850s? This is the summer of 1863. Okay. Uh-huh. And, you know, settlers thought it was marauding Indians. They thought it was Confederate guerrillas at the time. <laughs> wow. Um, until finally, his identity became known, and manhunts just took off. Oh, this is cool. Place. This is cool. We have a little video uh, to, to give you a flavor of this uh, the book is called The Vendetta of Felipe Espinosa. Take a look at this. Civil war rages in the east. An unclaimed wealth of natural resources beckons prospectors to the west. Far from and between it all, a gunman stalks the territories on a divine mission to kill American settlers. He would elude governors and armies, bounty hunters and posses, until his demise at the climax of a fierce high country manhunt. By then, Felipe Espinosa, had claimed more than 30 lives to quietly become one of the nation's first serial killers and foreign terrorists. Wow. A divine mission? He thought this was done in the name of God? Yes. In fact, he kept a diary as he uh, went on this crusade of his. And unfortunately, this diary has since been destroyed. Um, but a few passages have been recorded. And in these passages, he'll actually talk about dreams he had in which the Virgin Mary would visit him and tell him to um, kill Americans, to, um, wow. in some reports, to kill 600 American settlers. Um, and so would, how much research did you have to do to figure all this out? I mean, quite or, a bit. And this isn't a guy, he's not a, like I didn't learn about him in New Mexico history class. I mean, how did you come to learning about him too? I actually grew up in the little town of Fair Play, Colorado, um, the exact geographic center of the state where this guy committed most of his crimes here. In fact, there's a little cemetery at the center of town, and all the victims buried there are, were victims of his. Wow. Um, so yes, a very little known story. Um, you have all this other history going on at the time, so it's little wonder that this really remarkable story kind of got swept over and it got overshadowed by everything else. Mm -hmm. So I guess Billy the Kid had better PR people than uh, Felipe did, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with Because <laughs> this guy was more yeah. notorious. Oh, yeah, in a way. yeah, and much more deadly, too. Yes. Uh-huh. That, oh, that's interesting. So w was he a young man? 
He was older at the time. Yeah, older? He was in his 40s. Uh -huh. However, he did have his younger brother um, as an accomplice for most of it. And then when the younger brother was killed by a posse out of this town of Fair Play, Felipe went back down to the northern New Mexico, southern Colorado area and recruited a 12-year-old nephew mm. to continue the, the killing spree here. Wow. And finally, the governor of Colorado commissioned a fi famous scout by the name of Tom Tobin. And Tobin was a really close friend of Kit Carson. And Tobin tracked him down high up into the mountains on this really fierce manhunt here and finally got him. Wow. Yeah. This sounds like an amazing movie. It oh, does. I think yeah. so too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd like to see it go. Oh there, man, you? I'd love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> are there you know, are there historical documents that really survive about all of this stuff, or is this stuff that you had to dig up? How, yeah. did, how did you find the research? You know, as with all history, um, it's written by the victors. What we do have recorded here is written by those that hunted him. Um, pretty much nothing exists from the Espinosa perspective, really from the Hispanic perspective um, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, that's a big reason I decided to write it as a novel instead of just a, a straight up nonfiction book, um, was to attempt to step into his shoes and figure out his motivation. What did you think those were? Um, boy. Walk us through that just a little bit. Sure. Well, right at the close of the Mexican-American War, we had this big influx of settlers coming in. Um, and naturally, there's going to be a lot of disputes over uh, land grants. Uh, we have Americans coming in just saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and make a ranch right here. Um, but yet you have Hispanics that have been living here for generations who more or less just woke up one morning and found themselves living in America. Um, so there's a lot of political turmoil. Um, there's a lot of cultural and religious turmoil. And from this, um, Felipe probably made this vendetta um, mm -hmm. to go off and start killing Americans. Wow. Mm -hmm. A nice bit of drama to hang the cross on the saddle there. Yeah, you know, um, riding off. Yeah. <laughs> My wife made this book trailer. It's becoming very popular to make book trailers yes. to promote mm -hmm. books now. Nice job. Yeah, yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, she's an actress here in New Mexico, and so this was her first directorial uh, <laughs> project. <laughs> That's very cool. Uh, book signings. Uh, now you get to be the the author and go out and sign books and yeah, this take is the it fun out on part. tour. The, the writing's done. Now yeah. I can kind of uh, kick back a little bit. So yeah, um, this evening. I will be at Opposite Bookstore in Santa Fe at 6 p.m. and January 4th at 3 p.m. at Bookworks. Excellent. And Excellent. find out all about Felipe Espinosa. That's right. Mm -hmm. Wow, and, this is great. Adam, congrats on your first book. Thank you. Uh, I hope this is the first of, of many to come, and maybe we'll see a movie out of this. Who yeah, knows? I hope so. That'd be great. <laughs> hey, Adam, great, great job. Thank you. Thank you. The Vendetta of Felipe Espinosa. Adam James Jones, our author here, uh, be signing books tonight in uh, Santa Fe. This segment brought to you by our friends at ABQ Free Press. And Dan Mayfield and I will be back with more on The Morning Brew right after this.